Gorgeous Memorial Day Monday in Denver, Colorado, and we are ready to start our best of three national championship series. The Toros from Cal State Dominguez Hills against the Hillcats of Rogers State. One of these two teams will win its first ever national championship tomorrow. Best of three series begins with game one today, game two, and if necessary, game three here in Denver on Tuesday. Welcome to MSU Denver, everybody, on NCAA.com. Alongside Leah Secondo and Brendan Gulick, these two teams have been awesome to watch this week. Roger State hasn't lost. They have dominated on both sides of the ball. How about this Toros team, though? Unbelievable offense, 62 hits in five games. Yeah, they are the team to chase right now with a 413 average over this championship series, and they're going to face the best pitching team. Uh, of the championship series in Rogers State with a 2.33 ERA. I think it's going to come down to the little things. Doing the little things right, this is the new chapter of the season. While these teams have played 70 games almost, chapter one again starts today, and everybody is 0-0. Zero zero. Toro's an incredible run here in this postseason after the coming out of the West region. We take a look at how these two teams got here. Let's start with uh, Cal State Dominguez Hills, who had to survive a couple of elimination games after beating the number one team in the country, Texas Tyler, in the first game of this tournament on Thursday. They lost to Rogers State 10-2 in a game that featured an awful lot of offense, just not enough clutch hits from the Toros. We'll touch on it more as the game goes along. Then they beat Seton Hill and yesterday beat North Georgia twice. Now we flip to the other side of the bracket where Rogers State Again, they have not lost this week. They've been really impressive. 7-2 over Southern Indiana on Thursday. Friday, of course, they beat Dominguez Hills 10-2. So they earned an off day on Saturday by going through the winner's bracket. And yesterday beat Texas Tyler in a very long day that featured a nearly three-hour rain delay. Final score against the Patriots was 9-3. And so no matter what these teams have done earlier this week, it all is washed away, and it becomes a best-of-three national championship series that starts this afternoon. The designated home team by virtue of a coin flip for this first game of the series is Rogers State. So they're in their white jerseys with the Navy pants as they're introduced now out on the field. The uh, Toros are in their mostly uh, gorgeous red tops and pants. We have not seen these uniforms yet this week. I am so looking forward to seeing how this uh, Toros team offensively adjusts against a pitcher in uh, Drea Morales, who is very arguably the best pitcher in Division II softball, Leah. Mm -hmm. And they had some success against her. But they just couldn't come up with that base hit that uh, opened the floodgates. They scored only two runs but had 12 hits when they played earlier in the week. Well, and I think for the Toros with Drea Morales, it's going to be uh, a listening opportunity the first few times up for those batters. It's ever so important for those batters on deck to watch what's going on and to relay the information back to the other batters because technically you've only seen her live three times. Jim Mayer, the head coach of the Toros. Andrea Vaughn, head coach of the Hillcats. Leah and I pause real quick for the national anthem. We'll get underway here in just a moment from Denver.
nation's anthem on this Memorial Day Monday. And given the stakes, these two teams with such youth and such high dreams and aspirations coming into this championship tournament, there were points in the year where neither one of these two teams thought that this would really be a reality, but there are some that have believed the whole way. And the champions out of the central region will play the champions from the west region in a best of three to win a national championship. Leah, let's take a look at the starting lineup here offensively for the designated visiting team, Cal State Dominguez Hills. They are rewriting the record books here on the offensive side of this D2 tournament. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Presnell, who is uh, one of their key pieces, has just uh, been incredible in hitting the ball. Uh, this is a team that, that uh, will base hit you to death and be able to uh, manufacture some runs. I think the key piece that you and I talked about earlier today was the fact that they've got to be able to not only get those base hits, but get multiple runs at the same time. Take a look at uh, Ashley Wees. I beg your pardon, at uh, Drea Morales. And I beg your pardon. I mentioned Presnell there, and I, I okay. flip-flop things a little bit. But uh, base hits are key. The big thing for them is that they have to be able to uh, get more than one run out of you know, 13, 14 hits that they're pounding out consecutively. Drea Morales, 37 and four on the season as we get underway at 12.02 local time here in Denver. She's 37 and four with a 119 earn run average. Opponents are hitting just 175 against her. This young lady, 344 strikeouts over 269 and two thirds innings. She's walked only 41 batters, given up 48 runs, all except two of them have been earned. 46th appearance of the season for Morales, 41st start. And there is no bigger stage to pitch on at this level. That ball is slapped foul by Amara Labanog. Cal State Dominguez Hills has been ridiculous offensively. Raquel Jaime, who bats third in the order, has already tied the all-time Division II tournament record with 12 hits and with five doubles. She was impossible to get out yesterday. Slap toward the second baseman, and Chelsea Spain takes care of Labanog for the first out here this afternoon. The one thing that uh, Cal State, I think, has done very well over the last three games that they've played is the one thing that they've done very well is the fact that they have uh, consistently tried to stay ahead in the count and be aggressive at the plate, and I think you're going to have a command in the box going after the first pitch as an example here. They have done that throughout the tournament. We just saw the defensive alignment there. Michaela Bowman, Kimberly Presnell, and Lana Gass in the outfield. Jalen Gibson, Nicole Price, Chelsea Spain, and Alexis Watson around the diamond as Spain races to her left and puts away Kiana Abalera for the second out. And Abby Rogers is catching. We've got a couple of freshman catchers in this national championship best of three, and they both have made some serious noise with their bats, but have also played pretty well defensively. Two up, two down as Rocky Jaime comes to the plate. Reference what she did yesterday. I mean, she was just a, a walking base hit. Needed to beat North Georgia twice. So in the first game of the day, she went four for four with two doubles, two singles, and two ribbies. And then in the second game, was on base three out of four times with a walk, had an RBI single and a two-run single later in the game. Jaime, this tournament, is 12 for 19 with five doubles, a walk, and seven runs driven in. She's walking into the box, Brendan, with just oozing with confidence. Shoulders back, she's looking around, she's scanning the field. One-two pitch from Morales. This is outside. A nice, easy, open stance. Her stance is open completely up to Morales. That front foot out. Down the right field line, carrying a little bit, but no problem for Ms. Gass out in right field. 
The Toros go in order in the top of the first inning. And when we come back, this dangerous Hillcat offense will grab the bats for the first time. You're watching live streaming coverage of the Division II Softball National Championship on NCAA.com. Hillcat hitters have been hard to retire this entire tournament. Second only to the Toros in the offensive production they've put out, but they have found ways to minimize mistakes defensively, and that's why they're unbeaten. There has not been an easy out in this lineup all week. Chelsea Spain leads us off, and she takes ball one. By the way, Kevin Condor, our home plate umpire for game one of the series. Trina Comerford umpiring at first base. Bill Gattuso down the third baseline. Congratulations to our umpires for earning their way here as well. This one is fouled away off the right-hand side. And since we reference the umpires, and maybe you haven't joined us throughout this tournament, just worth noting early on quickly, each team does have two instant replay challenges available, and only two. If they win both of them, that's it. They still don't get an additional one. You don't get additional challenges into extra innings as well. And the umpires can initiate a review on their own accord after the sixth inning begins at any point. Replays are conducted off-site at DV Sport in Pittsburgh. And the replay review will be then uh, relayed to the umpires for the final decisions. Chelsea Spain pops one up in foul ground and right in front of the dugout. Labanog overran it. That sun is starting to come around the stadium for that left side of the field right now, and Lobnock choosing not to wear a hat. And she's going into unfriendly confines over there on the third base side, but did a good job trying to find where the dugout was before that ball reached its peak. 1-2 is a soft line drive caught by the shortstop, Jaime. One out in the bottom of the first. Let's get a look at that Toro defense. Claudia Valencia is the left fielder. Kiana Abalera in center. Alex Davis in right. I mean, the shortstop there with Amara Labanog playing to her left at third base. Shanoa Ao is at second. The first baseman is Kaylee Hull. And Maya Lopez is catching Ashley Weiss. Been very impressed with this outfield for Dominguez Hills, especially Valencia. Abalera made an awesome catch against Rogers State in the first meeting earlier in the week. In there, a called strike to Nicole Price. Price, one of several freshmen on the field, hitting 277 during her freshman campaign. She's a true slap hitter, doesn't have a lot of pop, but has shown a great, uh, a great glove this week. Behind in the count here, one and two. Price, Rogers, and Bridget Morales, all freshmen in Rogers State starting lineup. Labanog, Davis, Hull, and Lopez, all freshmen for Cal State Dominguez Hills. This price fouls one away. If you haven't followed the tournament along the way, Seton Hill, Adelphi, Southern Indiana, Auburn Montgomery, North Georgia, and Texas Tyler all got here to Denver and all bowed out en route to this championship series best of three. North Georgia went into the winner's bracket, lost twice yesterday to these Toros. They were disappointed to be going home thinking they were so close to winning their first title since 2015. Price one hops it back to the circle. And Weiss throws her out at first base, two gone. Auburn Montgomery had high hopes. The Warhawks ranked number three in the country. And at times they looked really good this week, but just not consistent enough. We've got a lot of first timers here in this tournament. Southern Indiana was the first team eliminated, although they won the most recent national title out of the group. 
back in 2019. Lana Gass, was she any good yesterday or what? She is, uh, you know, we talked about <clears throat> having your groove and finally settling in, and it takes a couple of games just to get accustomed to this setting. And Gas uh, is gassing it up right now offensively for this Rogers State team. She, again, another player who just is commanding confidence in the box. She is being really smart, really has tightened up on her strike zone, and it has benefited her this week. Had a big three-run double yesterday, four for nine this week with uh, four RBIs and that one big extra base hit. Ashley Weiss has been someone the Toros have had to lean pretty heavily on on their trip to this best of three. As Weiss hits the outside corner. Alyssa Olagi has started most of the games for the Toros this week. And in the beginning of the week, Olagi had trouble getting through two innings. She wasn't pitching terribly. She just didn't really have it. And Weiss came in and essentially saved the day, and the Toro offense helped out-hit any of the mistakes they were making defensively mm -hmm. because there have been a lot of them. Dominguez Hills has committed ten errors, including five in the first three innings of yesterday's first elimination game. But they overcame it as that pitch hits the inside corner for strike three. So the first inning complete, and maybe some of those jitters are starting to fizzle out now. We are in the uh, rhythm and routine of the game as we go to the second. Both offenses quiet in the first inning. Top of the second when we come back. Ray Morales goes back out to work after both offenses went in order. That's what they're playing for this week. The Hillcats and the Toros. Somebody is taking home the coveted Walnut and Bronze Trophy. Morales. When she's got the ball, you get this sense that she's really in control. She and Rogers have been on the same page all week. Well, and you talk about the good chemistry that they have, and you think about the fact that, <clears throat> excuse me, Abby Rogers is a freshman. Freshman no more, you know, when you're in this deep into the season, but it takes a chemistry to be built between the two of them. And uh, Abby Rogers has a huge responsibility behind the plate, really orchestrating the infield, sizing up the pitchers, working with Morales, looking in the dugout, taking the calls from the dugout as well. Um, as they ad-lib through different scenarios, making sure the fielders are in the right spots. And uh, I think that, you know, between this battery and Rogers herself, uh, that takes a, a special type of a, a young lady with, with great composure uh, at this level of play. I wholeheartedly agree. And, and I'll tell you, you know, for, for two teams to be playing for a national championship with freshman catchers, who have both hit big home runs mm -hmm. and have both played such solid defense. You're going to see Maya Lopez batting next where the ladies decked out in their Cardinal jerseys here. It, I think it says a lot about the trust that the coaching staff has in them because, look, they've performed well, but, mm -hmm. man, you can't have a catcher that, you know, mentally falls asleep at any point on this stage. You've got to be locked in. It just speaks to the maturity and the high softball IQ that both Rodgers and Lopez have shown. Upstairs there from Drea. Her numbers this week, 3-0 with a 2.33 ERA. Leads the tournament in pitching with 18 strikeouts. She's given up seven runs, all earned, on 26 base hits over those 21 innings. Walked only two. This ball's hit pretty well. Out into the gap, we've got our first base hit. To the fence it goes from Claudia Valencia, and she's got a double to open up the top of the second inning. Well, Valencia is locked in. We were watching her in uh, taking some BP, and uh, this ball is really flat in the zone. And Valencia, yeah, shredding the pellets out there at second base. 
Raining base hits and extra base hits right now for the Toros. Here is Maya Lopez. First pitch is called a strike. That outside corner seems to be a little more accessible today to right-handed hitters if you are either Weiss or Morales. Were uh, a couple of instances in games earlier in the tournament where that was a hard pitch to get a called strike on. But today it looks like it's a more pitcher-friendly zone early, so get up there, get ready to swing, and find one you like. Problem for Lopez here, she's fallen behind 0-2 to a darn good pitcher. Cuts over the top of it, tipped it into the glove, strike three. Huge strike out from Morales. She was a little ticked off with herself that uh, she had laid that 3-2 pitch out previous to Valencia over the plate to hit into the gap and coming back with a nice one at the knees here for the strike three on the hot Lopez. Time called right as Morales was starting into her windup. Batter is Shanoa Au, who usually wears number 11, but Don's 15 when she wears the all Cardinal jersey. She pops up a bunt and it's grabbed by Gibson. Frustrating out for the Toros there as they tried to move the runner along. You see that bat, the way the bat was directed, it was actually directed a little bit more up in the air trying to get that high pitch instead of kind of tilting her bat and her hands toward the ground, making it an easy catch there at third for Gibson. Caitlin Sturms had a pretty good tournament offensively. This could be a tough play, but Price gets rid of it quickly enough, and Sturm is retired. How about that? Morales allows the leadoff double, but quickly gets the next three outs and works around it as the Toros leave a runner in scoring position. Middle of two, no score in Denver. One of the most feared hitters in this tournament field leading us off in the bottom of the second, Abby Rogers. Freshman catcher for Rogers State. 14 homers, 55 RBIs, and she's hit three home runs already this week. Takes one down and away. This is the most recent of her home runs. Last night, taking it the opposite way. Kept that shoulder. In and turned in, kept that neck low and straight and silent body and just ripped it like she ripped the cover off of this second pitch. In the left field for a nice base hit. Rogers with the first hill cat hit of this game one. And somewhat unsurprisingly, we're going to see a pinch runner for her. Both these two coaches, Andrea Vaughn and Jim Mayer, like to use their full roster. I think that's pretty cool. They get a lot of young ladies involved. We see lots of pinch hitters and pinch runners. Natalie Gonzalez summoned here early. Well, and, and you know, sometimes when you're recruiting kids, you you, you hope the players are going to work out in different scenarios, and they may not work out in one scenario, but you find a spot in the home for them to work effectively in another area, and they have to buy into it. You have to have the right players to do so, and you have to be ready when you're called upon. Bridget Morales, the DP, wants one out in front of the plate. It's a good one. The only plays at first, but Al couldn't handle it. If she would have handled the ball, she still could have come back down on the base in time. Glad there was no bad collision there between Bridget Morales and Shinola Ao. Jim Mayer actually is coming out and asking for a review. Let's take a look. She did a great job, I'll tell you what. Staying and finding and continuing to hold the bag. I think she held the bag yeah. on that second carry, and this will be a good challenge for Coach uh, on that, that determination. Was, it helped it was right in front of him. <laughs> she <laughs> really did a good job, uh, a very good job. You think about the ball's up high, she's leaping, she's making sure that she's trying to find the bag, and the runner's pitter-pattering across her area. So. She's also lucky she didn't get her ankle stepped on. Yeah. 
So we show you the replay here in full speed a couple times as we send the video coverage right back to DV Sport yeah. in Pittsburgh. And we'll try to show you another slow-mo look after that. But uh, once we saw the replay, I thought she had actually bobbled it a second time when she came down. I think this is pretty definitive that this call will get overturned. It was definitely a, uh, definitely a bobble first, right? Great athleticism, yep. She's out there. And she does have control of it. And, and it would have been so easy for Ao to, to leave that foot off and move it off the bag. Holds it, holds it right there, right there. Frame no question look, about it. it and and the excellent other piece of that for any young athlete watching at home, she, she protected that ball with her other hand in the glove. Everybody always talks about two hands, and that was a perfect example of it right there. Nice job by Ao. That shivers up my spine watching her get her ankle stepped on. Yeah. But it uh, looks like she's okay. That's good news, too. Obviously, no ill intent there for Morales, who right after the play kind of reached out to her and said, hey, sorry about that. It probably actually helped Al's case that she, you know, sort of positioned where she was because Morales slowed up mm -hmm. trying to avoid a collision with her. So I would have to think that that replay was conclusive, but we'll wait and see what the umpires decide. And they have overturned it. Out at first base, so Morales is retired 5-4 on the sacrifice. And Rod, or I no, should say Gonzalez moves from first to second. All right, runner in scoring position for Roger State, and the batter is Michaela Bowman. A little pop flare, that's gonna go uncaught. Are you kidding? Oh my goodness. Miscommunication between Hull and Al, maybe the sun or breeze played a, a factor in that. It is pretty windy, but that's gotta be caught. Well, and Hull looks up, and I don't, yeah, I think she lost it in the sun. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I think. There was no call off by Ow. I think Hall lost it completely in the sun. And unfortunately for the Toros, runners at the corners now for the Hillcats. And well, with look, it, it was just say if you're the Toros, right, this is not totally unfamiliar territory. No. Nope. They were living on borrowed time yesterday when they came back to win a game where they made five errors in the first three innings. That's a uh, serious, <laughs> I can't fall asleep work of art right there. I think she should bring it to the Denver Arts and Crafts Show down on the river. <laughs> and I I'm like sure it. that uh, that would garner some serious change. Nice job. Toros overcame five errors yesterday because they scored on 17 base hits in that game. But they put themselves in quite a hole. They had to dig out of... Alexis Watson takes a called strike. She's had kind of a quiet bat in this tournament, yeah. but do not miss in her wheelhouse or she'll hit one over the skyscrapers and straight away center field. She has really struggled with the outside pitch in this tournament and a big bat. She just needs to get something in the outfield right now to get a run across. Foul tipped it off of Lopez's mask. By the way, I know it was kind of awkward, but it goes as a base hit for Michaela Bowman. So runners on the corners with one out for the Hillcats in the bottom of the second. As our home plate umpire, Kevin Condor, goes out and speaks with Ashley Weiss. Called that preventative umpiring a couple times this week. I didn't see anything off the top of my head that caught my attention, but obviously caught his. Watson chases some high heat. Strike three. Two outs for Jalen Gibson. Just really going high, and that's where 
Opposing pitchers have had success along with that outside pitch against Watson all week. She bought it. Runner on a late break for second base, trying to get caught up in between bags. He may have run himself out of the inning here. Bowman. Bowman breaks for second. And they just allow her to take second base. They were much more concerned <laughs> about the runner at third. And still, they, they caught a huge break there because all Jaime had to do was turn around and, and uh, within steps. Very fortunate there, would have had Bowman. Gibson with two in scoring position, takes a strike. Nice pitch, right on the corner by Weiss. She has been so solid since coming in in relief against North Georgia last evening. Crank down the left field line, foul. Both of these pitchers are pretty good. Let's get another look at this foul ball. Both these pitchers pretty good. But I think both of the offenses have taken more of the spotlight for these two teams this week. Wouldn't be surprised if this is a tight game, but maybe a bit more high scoring by the end of it. Pop fly behind second base. Ow squeezes it, and now both pitchers have gotten out of many jams in the second inning. Gibson retired for the final out of the second, and both teams feel like they're settling in now. We are headed to the third in a score. It's the top of the third inning as Alex Davis leads off for the Toros. 8-9-1 for Cal State Dominguez Hills against Drea Morales. Drea throws down and in for ball one. Alex Davis, freshman right fielder, 255 on the season. Called strike there. Davis has been okay at the plate this week, three of 13. Has a couple RBIs. She's drawn two walks and been hit by a pitch. She flares that one out to right field. Looks pretty routine for Lana Gass. One out. Now to one of the hotter hitters who is maybe sneaky hot because she bats in the bottom of the order. Kaylee Hull's had a great week. Eight for 14 with a double and three RBIs, plus two walks. She's only hitting 315 on the season. That is obviously a good average, but having a great national tournament. Yeah, over, oh, pretty close to 600 uh, on this national championship. And these are the times of the year when you get in a postseason, I don't care what sport it is, where, you know, underclassmen, freshmen, sophomores, juniors that, that maybe haven't had a lot of PT or have had PT but are in a setting that is new to them, take it to the next level. And then that carries them confidence-wise to then be a leader the next year as the team gets back together again to pre prepare for 2023. And um, that certainly has happened for Hall this week. She has been the starting first baseman now 57 times, if you include today, as they work on getting a new ball put in play. Cal State Dominguez Hills has played 67 games before coming here today. So Hull's been out there most of the year. Alex Davis has played every game this season. Morales is 1-2, is fouled back. You know, that's the other part that maybe doesn't get enough attention. 
when you make a deep run like this, you're spending that much more time together as a team mm -hmm. with coaches, which basically every other team in the in the country doesn't have right now. And it's, and especially you know through COVID. Um, sure. A lot of these freshmen never saw campus until they got to campus. A lot of these freshmen didn't have what we would call a typical freshman year, and a lot of players didn't even play like Dominguez Hills. So, um, you know, this is really their coming out party of what they could do at this next level of ball. Hall fouls another one away. If you're not familiar with the Toros, they didn't play last year. Pretty frustrating because other conferences in the West region did play. In fact, we saw one of the teams from the West region in Biola, the Bible Institute of Los Angeles. They made it to this best of three series last year. And Jim Mayer, head coach of the uh, ladies and Cardinal today, he told us earlier in the week he really wasn't very happy that they didn't have a season last year. And I suppose it speaks to the depth of the region but they had to go through a couple of really tough teams. As Morales misses outside. They're young. They don't have a ton of experience. But they sure have come up clutch. And, you know, when you get to this, this stage, Leah, you, you want to feel like you won as opposed to the other team just didn't play well enough and they lost the game. And I think the Toros have had the best of both of those things happen. Their offense has carried them because they've needed it because they've almost given away games. Makes it a little more fulfilling. This is driven pretty well out to deep right center field, and it is gone! Just snuck over the fence. Kaylee Hull, the first run in this championship series, a solo shot to right center. A line drive that just wouldn't fall down. First of the series, seventh of the season, and for a haul right off the bat, the wind's blowing very heavy out towards right center field. So if you get that outside pitch, you're going to get some extra loft in this Colorado air, and she sure did there. Labanog, one hop to shortstop, and Price takes care of her. Two outs here in the third. Solo home runs won't kill you. And so Morales just needs to dial it back in, but it's always fun to score first. Here is Abelera. Uh, I guess missed the outside corner, beg your pardon. Morales doesn't give up a ton of home runs. How's that one back? That is the 19th home run allowed by Morales. This ball is hit into center field, right on a line. It hung up there again. <laughs> Presnell did a good job of expecting that win to hold it up. And so the uh, Dominguez Hills Toros draw first blood. Kaylee Hull, a solo shot. It's 1 0, middle of the third. Hillcats try to draw up a response. 
And they send their, uh, their best hitter to the plate to open up the third inning after Rogers State gave up a solo home run in the top of this frame. Kimberly Presnell is eight for 11. That 727 batting average going into this game right now would break the all-time Division II tournament record. She's been outstanding. Presnell fouls that one back. Just a sophomore. She hasn't been starting all season. She and Taylee Redding have become close friends. Taylee just having a tough year offensively. It had been the shortstop. She's played a little center field. But Taylee told Kimberly coming into this tournament, hey, it's, it's your time. Go out there and shine. <laughs> I guess Presnell took that to heart because she has been statistically the toughest out in the tournament mm -hmm. so far. Down on the count here, one and two. It's a high fly ball to shallow center. Second baseman goes back on it. Al makes the catch. There's one out. Al showing her range. because that would have been an awfully difficult catch to make for Avalara and Davis, both very deep in the outfield. Top of the order now, Chelsea Spain. And it's through, base hit. Just past Jaime's glove. Spain is aboard, third hit for the Hillcats. Good spot, and actually, uh, with Spain being off the plate a little bit, she actually had to uh, kind of throw that bat head out there on it. Little, little bit of speed. This isn't a, a big running team. She's six for eight. Let's we'll see what they do. Price bunts it foul. That's an interesting point because Cal State Dominguez Hills and Rogers State have not been the most active teams on the base paths this week. Roger State has successfully stolen three. Dominguez Hills has been thrown out three times mm -hmm. and stolen three. But we have seen a good number of sack bunts just trying to move runners up, mostly because they don't want to take the bats out of their hands. They've been hitting as a team so well this week. Price watches ball one. I give uh, Labanag so much credit. We've seen her all week. She'll. She has her little dance to get her herself in position. Usually it's a little hop step by most players, but she kind of she starts keeping her feet going as soon as the uh, ball gets in a circle. Out to left field, great read, but they can't double her off. Valencia with a good strong throw, but Hull came well off the base as Spain scampered back. Price out number two. So here comes Lana Gass. Gass struck out looking last time up. Hillcats are averaging 10 hits per game in the tournament. This is their fourth game. Cal State Dominguez Hills is playing its sixth game because they faced an elimination a couple of times. But they're averaging just over 12 hits per game. So perhaps a little underwhelming almost in the fact that the offense hasn't taken center stage yet. Guess here she goes. She's getting ready now. She gets into her position. Like I said, every everybody does it a little bit, a little bit different. Most players will take a couple of steps back and then take like a hop step in, and she finds the best way to get her rhythm going. Playing back here with two outs. Happy feet. And for gas Lavinog. up. Yep. But she's not afraid to, uh, you know, if there's less than two outs and she thinks you're going to lay it down or. Take a slap. Uh, she's been staring some of these batters down within 20 feet. Which isn't uncustomary, but some of the batters that she were face was you know was going to face uh, were players that didn't have any intention of <laughs> got, laying it uh, down. You got to be a little crazy to come in that far. 3-1, Gas hits a foul ball deep and out of play. Rogers State, champions of the Central Region. 
knocked off the number one team in the country and the top seed in this tournament in yesterday's impressive showing. They beat Texas Tyler, the Patriots. A little momentum for them coming into this best of three series. Called off by Hull, who grabbed it? So the one out base hit from Chelsea Spain, but no damage done on the scoreboard. And the runner left on, Roger State. Trails 1-0 at the end of the third inning. But we'll stay here with you to tell you a little bit about uh, a special anniversary. We're heading to the fourth 1-0 Dominguez Hills, but this is the 50th anniversary, Leah, of Title IX in the NCAA, and I think it's appropriate that we get a chance to talk a little bit about this here during the Women's Division II College World Series. Well, we've come such a long way with Title IX, and it, and it doesn't just, just relate to sports. It's uh, the whole gamut, but as it relates to sports, Going back to 72, you think about it, one in 27 girls participated in high school sports back pre-72. We're now down to two and five, which is about 300,000 women. So you went from about 10% to now over 50% uh, of the women go on to play collegiately. Uh, and that's all because of Title IX. There's still a lot of work to go. Um, I know I appreciate it. the coaches and um, people that are now in administration before me kind of setting the table so that I could have the opportunities and uh, not have to have hand-me-down uniforms or no uniforms and play on horrific fields. Th those people fought for what I was able to do, um, and, and we still have a long way to go. And it's the uh, 50th anniversary this year. There are people on Metropolitan State's administration who were very instrumental in the early days of Title IX to help push this along and get it to where it is today. And uh, we all celebrate it in year 50. Dominguez Hills with Jaime leading things off here in the fourth inning. Good diving effort to knock it down by Spain, but it's a leadoff single for Jaime here in the fourth. And that is her all-time tournament record, 13th hit here uh, at this Division II championship. Just right in the right spot. And even if Spain did a, who did a great job, as you said, knocking that ball down, it would have been awfully difficult to come up and make that play at first base. So the hot bat continues. Just to kind of tag what you were saying there and sort of put a bow on it, I, I think it is, it, you're right, it, it has come a long way, but still a long way to go for women's sports across the NCAA. But when you have tournaments like this, so well run, well attended, mm -hmm. um, I think it shows that there is a lot of passion for what we've got going on here and uh, reasons to keep pushing the envelope and, and trying to make progress because these are special student athletes who've got big time goals after they're done playing, knowing that this is the pinnacle. This is, this is everything it. they've worked for mm -hmm as athletes their whole lives. They get a chance to, to lay it all out on the field. And within the next couple days, for the upperclassmen, the season's gonna be over. Valencia grounds to second, and they can't throw her out at first base. An error by Price. Price was pick a in there, and the speed getting down the base paths of Valencia did a great job hustling. Price gets eaten up on this play. She's deep at short. Kind of slides into it. I think her intention, Brendan, was to slide, pick it up, and then find the bag herself and come across and just started the whole process a little bit too early. The bunt just goes foul for Lopez. Remarkably, in a tournament that has been dominated, unfortunately, by critical mistakes on defense and base running, this is the 25th inning defensively. The Hillcats have been out there. That is their first error mm -hmm. of the week. Let's see if Morales can work around it. Lopez struck out last time, gets the bunt down in a good place here. And they eventually, <laughs> <laughs> with a little hop step mm -hmm. there from Spain, they get mm -hmm. the out and move both runners up. <laughs> so Valencia to second, Jaime to third, and Shanoa Ao, who has not had a great offensive tournament, to change her fortunes with a big base hit here.
most of her teammates have been really good offensively. Ao is just three for 14 so far this week. Actually, three for 15 after popping out in foul ground last time up. But a couple ducks on the pond, as they say. Yeah, big bases clearing uh, double in the 9-6 to six victory over Seton Hill. It was definitely her most impactful play of the week. That one got past the third baseman, Gibson, and turns into no play. Ow reaches, but the defense at least keeps the runs from scoring for the moment. Problem is, now they're loaded for a very hot hitter in Caitlin Sturm. Yeah, and again, we talk about the service here on the short hop. And no way that Gibson was able to pick that up. She kind of olayed it on the side, didn't get in front of it. And a very wise decision by Price, not even to try to make that play at first, just eat the ball. Second error in the inning, and a ground ball from Sturm up the middle, base hit. Jaime scores. Valencia dives in safely. A two-run single, and the Toros lead it 3-0 in the fourth. Sturm with her second and third RBIs of the week. Well, it's nice to be on the flip side as the Toros are feeling right now. They're, they understand it and they're taking advantage of it. And the second error making it hurt here with that shot back up the box, two more runs across. And the Toro fans are on their feet. Three runs on four base hits, two hits in the inning, two errors in the inning. This one is flared by Davis to right field. Nice catch by Gass. She comes up firing to third. It's a great throw, but a little late. Both runners move up on the fly out. So I understand the bait there, right? But for Gass out in right field, get the ball back into the infield because now you've allowed and then when I say the infield, get into second base, hit your cut, let your cut worry about what's happening, uh, and at least split the runners because now you've got two runners again in scoring position. And for a young lady who's hitting the ball really well, Kaylee Hull homered her last at bat. That made it one nothing, and now she's got two runners in scoring position here. And to your point, if she comes up with a base hit, she can make it a five nothing game. Here's what Hull did back in the third inning on this rising line drive. Just wouldn't leave without getting over that wall. Yeah, in a hot area of the ballpark. Uh, as we mentioned, it's really blowing out pretty strong to right and right center. One, two. Grounded through the middle base hit. How about that? The Toros hang a crooked number again. They have been so good at making you pay for your mistakes. Four runs in the fourth. It's 5 nothing. The Stinger, again, we talk about it hitting the cut. Doesn't show up as an error on the board, but putting the ball on the ground. We talked at the top of the show about how the Toros have been able to get many base hits, but it hasn't shown and reflected in the box score with runs coming across. Today, it's materialized in both facts. Coach Vaughn is out and there will be a change. We have seen Drea Morales throw every pitch so far at this Division II College World Series. And I'll tell you what, for a program that has ridden Morales so hard throughout the year because she has just dominated teams. This is a little deflating for the Hillcats, but again, remember, it's a best of three series. You're allowed to have a tough game, and the Hillcat offense has proven they are very capable of mounting a big comeback. So they turn things over to Michaela Hillman, who is quite capable in her own right. Absolutely. Number two on the staff all season long with Hillman, one point. 7-0 ERA and uh, for Hillman. This is her first appearance in this setting of the week of the championship series. 15 and six on the season, her 29th appearance on the year. 
48 walks, 74 strikeouts on the season in 140 innings pitched. Morales goes three and two thirds so far. She's given up five runs, only one earned on five base hits. But she's still responsible for the runner out at second base. No walks and one strikeout, that's it. Only Maya Lopez struck out in the second inning for a pitcher that has basically dominated national headlines around this sport for the way she strikes batters out. One of only a couple pitchers ever to have more than 100 wins and 1,000 strikeouts in her career. But today has not been Morales' day so far. So Michaela Hillman gets the call. And the new batter is Amara Labanog. Hillman, a sophomore from Pryor, Oklahoma. Bobanog, a couple ground outs, watches outside. Cal State Dominguez Hills, a solo homer in the third, and a pair of two RBI hits. Sturm and Hull have driven in all five runs today. On the ground to short, Price sure-handed this time with an inning-ending ground out. But not before Dominguez Hills erupts for four runs in the fourth inning. And the Hillcats have to respond quickly because advantage Toros big time midway through this game. Leah, the Hillcats have not had a whole lot of adversity this week. They have been uh, playing with the upper hand pretty much every game. Yep. Toros are pretty loose right now, if you can't tell. <laughs> They've got a 5 nothing lead. Roger State, no runs, three hits, and two critical errors. that helped four unearned runs come across in the top of the fourth inning. And so now the Hillcats have to maybe manufacture a little enthusiasm here to sure do. climb back in it. Sure do, one at a time. And, you know, they had plenty of time yesterday to watch all of the components of this Toros team. The 17 hits, the five errors, the beat down of every single pitcher in, in North Georgia's staff just being able to really recognize how to hit. And it didn't matter which pitcher it was for North Georgia. They just really took advantage of every opportunity. So there is great respect, no question, on Roger's state part um, of what they are facing right now and the adversity they are facing. If you're unfamiliar with these two schools, Cal State Dominguez Hills is in greater Los Angeles. And Roger's state is a northeastern suburb of Tulsa, Oklahoma, as Abby Rogers Leads off the fourth inning with a walk. That'll bring up Bridget Morales. And you really couldn't, couldn't be in a better part of the country for both of these schools, right? You're, you're in South, really kind of South LA, South Bay, for uh, for Dominguez Hills. So we know what the talent is like all over California and how plentiful it is. And for Rogers straight State, you know, as far as putting your tentacles out in say a four mile, uh, four hour radius drive wise, because it is D2 and you, you, you don't have the luxury of the built in uh, monies that a D1 staff has. Uh, you've got a great pocket of student athletes, potential student athletes for both schools to attend. Softball is a really important part of the country in both of those regions. 
And I think the talent pool is pretty deep, and it's reflected in the rosters. You don't get here with young rosters that are predominantly student athletes from your neck of the woods, unless you've got a lot of, uh, lot of talent to pull from. This ball's hit pretty darn well. Deep to center field, it's gone! Bridget Morales, how's that for a response? Two run shot to straightaway center, and the Hillcats are on the board. It's five to two. <laughs> Lick your fingers, let it eat. Well, that, that ball was waist high, waist high. Perfect spot in the zone and just continue to carry. And Morales knew it right away. She gave the fist pump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. That's an awesome celebration. You know, they started to take away some of the celebrating at home plate uh, on the home runs and stuff. And, and I'm so glad to see that because this is, Nobody's trying to upstage anybody. It's just, it brings the family together and it's celebration. Just having a little fun. Absolutely. There's no, uh, there's no malicious intent with stuff like that, no. for sure. Both teams Absolutely. play with joy. That's the whole point of being here. Yeah. So the Hillcats have responded. The Toros, they'll still lead by three. Five runs, five hits, no errors, two left for the Toros. Two runs, four hits, two errors, and so far three left on base for Rogers State. Kayla Bowman, the batter. Weiss fires outside. They appeal, and she did not go around. 1-0. Now, well, Bowman had that crazy play over at first base where uh, I think truly think Hull lost it in the sun, and it kind of bounced for a base hit. So, you know, if I'm Hull and Davis right now, I'm kind of protecting that line a little bit more. Weiss seems to be continuously going to that outside portion of the plate. Like right there, you good know, one discipline. Of the, one of the thing, things I think the Toros have in their back pocket coming into this best of three, I think they realize that you don't have to be perfect to win. And I'm not just talking on a game to game basis, but even throughout the course of the season, you know, you don't see that many teams that win or are that close to winning national championships that have lost 22 times throughout the course of the year. But I think it shows their resiliency. You know, we've talked about the 10-2 the loss to Rogers State earlier in this tournament. They lost in 13 innings in the Super Regional opener against Cal State San Marcos, came around and won the next two. This one is hit through the left side. Bowman pulls an outside pitch for a base hit. And the Hillcat bats have come alive here in the fourth. <laughs> you know, and I'm chuckling because you're absolutely right. She took an outside pitch and she said, you know what, I don't care. I'm going to left field with it. I don't care what any of you say. And uh, a good solid hit here as we will see. A change over at first base. Pitch runner for Bowman coming. In the West Regional, Toros won the first game 1-0 over Chico State. Then they beat Concordia before losing to the Eagles and having to beat them a second time to win the regional. As the pinch runner, Roger State is number four, Marissa Smith. You know, they didn't win the CCAA championship. For a while, they were kind of trading wins and losses toward the end of the season, but it just goes to show you, you just don't have to be perfect. You no. figure out ways to take advantage of little situations in front of you and just keep playing. Keep the game alive. Keep yourself in it. Give yourself a chance. And sometimes you just might get so hot that you out-hit your mistakes you know, the way they've done it. We have seen it all weekend long. I don't care if it's D1 softball, D2 softball, D1 lacrosse, women's, this weekend. All three sports have had scenarios where it looked absolutely bleak for the opponent in, in one case or another. And fighting through, and that last opportunity was the difference. 
It's really hard to train yourself as an athlete to have a short-term memory like that, but those who can do that effectively tend to benefit from it. Right, and, and you kind of chuckle a little bit, right? You know, you have these series, three-game series, back-to-back, -back, or you're playing an elimination game, and it, you know it's you well, you have to, We have to have short-term memory. Well, absolutely you have to have short-term memory if you want to play tomorrow, for sure. Watson got a piece of it as she, she fouled it back into the screen. One ball, two strikes. There's still nobody out. Abby Rogers walked. Bridget Morales hit a two-run homer to center field. And Michaela Bowman singled. Marissa Smith now running for her at first base. Uh, you know, and I think Brendan with Watson, she's, as you said last time up, she is, you know, on the season hitting 337, but she has struggled here uh, in this at this championship, only hitting 222 coming into the day, where she's she wants to hit that ball so bad, she's lost a little bit of her discipline in the box. I mean, that's what Watson's capable of. You might not have been able to appreciate that at home. She hit that a mile out of here, right. foul to the left. I mean, and you she's can't hit it that far if you don't swing hard, right? right. She swings hard. And that one was above the eyes and out of the zone, though. She was lucky she got, got that and tomahawked it. And now Weiss knows that, okay? She's bit that ball out of the zone. Is she going to go at her again outside like that? Missed the outside corner. Two and two. I mean, this is uh, the kind of batter you want to see her unleash some power. We saw her double off the fence once this week. That was a line drive the other way. Watson is up there with one thing on her mind. I want to hit the ball as far as I can. She's not up here to try to move a runner over. <laughs> <laughs> Full count. Weiss doesn't want to make a mistake. That's another screamer foul. Valencia, Abalera, and Davis in the outfield are all playing pretty deep. Abinog, Jaime, Ao, and Hull around the diamond are all back too. Well, now Hull is even with the bag at first. Watson, a high deep ball to left center, carrying, but it'll stay in the park. And Valencia makes the catch. Got a little bit underneath that mm -hmm. one. Here's Jalen Gibson. Hillcat faithful have traveled well to Denver. It's a great crowd, frankly, for both sides. It's a gorgeous day, a little bit chilly. Temperature 62 degrees, but after a couple days with lots of clouds and a little rain here and there, giving way to a bright blue sky on this Memorial Day Monday. Roger State mentioned their crowd. I mean, they had a lot to uh, a lot to be thankful for when they hosted that Super Regional, and they beat their regional rivals, the Broncos from Central Oklahoma. Jalen Gibson uncorks a deep one, and that leaves the park just over the wall in left field. Two two-run homers for the Hillcats in the fourth. Wow, has this game turned on its head quickly. Gibson, you see that open stance, and she actually stays open on it. And within that inside pitch, as those hips rotate, got a little bit more juice on it, clearing the fence, no doubt about it. Eating it up at home plate, and now a one-run ball game. Ashley Weiss replaced by Alyssa Olagi as Weiss gives up a pair of two-run homers. The Toros are still leading this game 5-4, but they need to make a change here because the Hillcats this inning are not being fooled. That second time through the order, costly against Weiss. 
We've seen a lot of Miss Olagi this week, and to her credit, after a couple games earlier in the week, Leah, that just didn't go great, she settled down, and I thought yesterday she looked pretty good. I thought she looked pretty good. We saw her leave the game and then come back, excuse me, in the final game against North Georgia. And uh, I thought when she came back in the game, it was more so of a test of confidence than anything else. And she looked much, much better last night. And this is a new day. So the change up of eyes again for this hot hitting Hillcat team. And all of a sudden, uh, we have a whole new ball game. Well, the batter is Kimberly Presnell. Takes outside ball one. I don't want to get too far away from it before I forget. The NCAA Super Regionals between Rogers State and Central Oklahoma. Hillcats are red hot right now. I mean, they've won 17 of their last 18 games, but they swept the Broncos on Thursday and Friday of that week, 3-1 and 12-1 in five innings. And the environment in Claremore, Oklahoma, was the kind of thing that the Hillcat community has been really working toward for a long time. This is obviously a special team and a special season as Presnell hits a high fly to center field. And hangs up there for Abalera, two outs. And I just think it's great after, you know, you had so many people obviously with two teams that are close to each other, right, in, in UCO and in Roger State. They had such a great crowd, but I think it's great to see so many folks that have traveled to support both of these teams, especially in this case, Roger State here in Denver. Yeah, we've heard stories of uh, folks from both teams in all week long actually driving 12, 15 hours. Um, they're out here early. It's not a big true tailgate, but uh, they're doing anything they can early on just to make sure they get the prime seats in the park, which are right below us, right behind home plate. Aunts and uncles and cousins, brothers and sisters, friends, former teammates, former high school teammates. We were hearing stories about that. Uh, you know, just anything uh, that you can imagine support-wise to be here uh, for their respective teams. It's all that much more fun because it's a couple of programs that have never even been to the Division II Women's College World Series, let alone to this championship round. This is, in a lot of ways, uncharted territory. They've navigated the waters pretty darn well this week. Toro's overcoming some bad defensive mistakes. And the Hillcats just silencing opponents in this fourth inning, both top and bottom. You've seen the explosive nature of both offenses. I gotta admit, as it, you can see, it's a little more windy here now. I was a little surprised in those first couple innings to see the lack of offense, but perhaps there's some jitters for some of the younger players just weren't clicking. Now everybody settled in and it's like, hey, we've literally played on this field all week long. We've played this team already. Mm -hmm. Go up and put the ball in play. Good things will happen. Got a good offensive game going here. Five runs, five hits for the Toros. Four runs, six hits for Roger State. Spain went around. That's strike three. And Olagi comes in and gets the last couple batters retired. But Bridget Morales and Jalen Gibson each with two run homers in the bottom of the fourth inning. What a response by the Hillcats. They were down 5 nothing coming into the frame, and now it's a much better game. Eat up, Hillcats, 5-4. Number 10, 5-4 game as Michaela Hillman goes back to work. First time she's out there to start an inning after coming on and getting Labanog to ground out. 
to close the, uh, the fourth inning. If you're just joining us, I'm Brendan Gulick, along with Leah Secondo. This is the first game of our best of three championship series. Game two is scheduled for noon tomorrow. And if necessary, game three would come right after that. If there's any changes to the schedule, you can follow the NCAA Division II Twitter account. You can also check out NCAA.com for all the latest information. I'm sure these two schools and their respective sports information staffs will put out uh, alerts to any uh, possible changes as well. Since we mentioned them, Leah, big thanks to all of the athletic communications folks that have been so great to, to work with this week. Mm -hmm. We love sharing the stories of these student athletes and sports information directors and all the folks that help uh, share that information. I don't think they get enough credit in college mm -hmm. athletics. We are grateful for their yeah. work for sure. Well, and especially at the D2 level, a lot of them are working extremely shorthanded. They're one-man bands. They're relying on um, GAs and interns. And uh, they had a three-day turnaround at the most before coming here. And uh, every single one of them, we appreciate you and the coaches so much. A ball low and outside in a great spot. And the first K and the first out. And, you know, we also Metropolitan State's crew here and Jared Oates and uh, all of his people at Metropolitan State uh, for the last three years have been extremely awesome to us as well. Hey, look, Jaime has a base hit. <laughs> I mean, this is getting ridiculous. She's unbelievable. I just appreciate greatness when you see it. 14 base hits for Jaime in this tournament. She is 14 for 22 at the plate on the biggest stage this sport offers. That's not overpowering, just impressive. consistent, 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 consistent. One on one out for Claudia Valencia. Inside, just to punctuate. The uh, athletic communications folks. I mean, think about your favorite team or your favorite school, right? And for the most part, at the professional level, when you've got an organization, you've got one or maybe more <coughs> communications contacts for that team or that sport. Fly ball caught in right field by Gas, and there's two outs. In some instances, in some of the smaller schools, as Marissa Smith, by the way, stays in the game out in left field for Bowman here. In some instances, you've got one or two athletic communications folks that are overseeing 20 sports. And I know that they're, they're split between different seasons, but it is it's often a thankless job. And we are grateful for those folks for sure. Good job keeping it in front by Lana Gass. That's another solidly hit ball. Lopez singles to right field. Jaime goes from first to third, and now there's runners on the corners for the Toros. Their bats are responding nicely here in the fifth. Shanoa out, reached on an error last time up. at the knees, a called strike. Toros have been really good all week long at wiping the slate clean when they give up a bunch of runs in one inning. They just go right back to work offensively, and Al is going to try to bring a run across for the third inning in a row. Wow, good pitch by Hillman. Michaela's impressive. I mean, again, we haven't seen her all week until yeah. now. She's a really good pitcher. Really good pitcher, a lot of movement, and credit Al and not going up after that ball. Started up a little high in the zone. You saw where Rogers caught it. Doesn't matter where you catch it, still has to cross the zone, and it didn't. On the ground to Price, and she makes the throw across in time. Runners stranded on the corners. A couple of well-hit balls for the Toros. Rogers State gets out of it without giving up another run. We stay five to four. A little recap of how we got to this point in the game. It started back in the third inning. Kaylee Hull. Seems like oh so long ago, right? Uh, one to nothing and a two run single actually. And a great job by Hull, the lower part of that order, a homer and a single for an RBI. And things are moving along pretty good for 
Dominguez Hills, but the Hillcats were licking their chops. Morales with the two run blast and then look out, Gibson with the rocket over the wall. Here we sit at 5-4. So Hull a solo homer and a two run double. Caitlin Sturm a two run single. And a pair of two run homers for Morales and Gibson through the first four and a half innings. Rogers State, perhaps they have a little momentum at the moment after cutting into the lead last inning and then uh, getting into the bottom of the fifth inning here, keeping it 5-4. Lissa Olagi. They call her Lala. They really need, uh, need her to come up with something big here. RSU sending Price, Gas, and Rogers to the plate in the fifth. Five runs, seven hits, no errors, and two left for the Toros. Four runs, six hits, two errors, three left for the Hillcats. Clutch base hits on both sides today. And they're a strike. You see how tight now that left side of the field for the Toros is playing, trying to deny this slap, going back just a hair. But Ao is definitely back further at second base, more of a natural second base posi position. As the percentages lean more to that left side of the field here. Valencia in, trying to take away any little pop action towards left field. Loggy goes down to what looks like a rosin bag, but it's actually uh, dirt from a local field around here. This is an all-turf surface, and the Toros play basically no games on turf surfaces. So it just kind of helps her grip the ball a little bit better. Lead-off walk here in the fifth inning. Price is aboard, and here comes Lana Gass. Corners are squeezing in hard. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I, I understand it. How, I get how it. smart is, is that, though? By the, you're charging in so much. Great job on the bat direction there by Gas. She nearly put this one by. Watch, watch what happens here. Just using the power and the velocity of that pitch to scoot it and try to scoot it by Hull. I, I know that you're supposed to bunt there. I mean, Labanog's so close she could hug her as the third baseman. That, that just feels dangerous to me. To be that close, I'd swing away if I were to hit her. One ball, one strike. I mean, I, I'd. Or, you know, it's, and it's easier said than done, but you try to, you kind of try to punch it the way that Gas did that very first opportunity. Well, they throw to the second baseman, Ow, because the runner Price was dancing so far off first, and why not? Yeah, and Hull, was, Hull was charging in, so she's not going to come back, and she did go for it, they're saying. Um, you know, there was nobody back at first base, and a good, good recognition of where the defense was as the count sits at one and two now. As a base runner get off the base as far as the closest person to you is off the base, so you might as well. The only thing she has to worry about is Davis coming in from, from uh, right field. One-two is hit in the air, carrying to deep left center, but at the track, making the catch. Gas, a long, dramatic fly out. Hillcat fans were jumping out of their seats thinking they had a third two-run homer. Boy, that one really kind of died Going out to that left side of the field, there's a huge bit of difference, folks. Believe us when we tell you 
the way the wind is blowing towards on the left side of the field from the right side of the field. It's kind of getting knocked back into the park just a little bit. Abby Rogers has singled and walked. And Olagi pitched it where she wanted, but got a, uh, a ball instead of a strike. 1-0. Oh. Runner at first is Nicole Price. Roger State really doesn't run a lot as a team. No. It's not just this week. They really don't try to steal many bases. It's outside. Andrea Vaughn looking in her, in her uh, call sheet in the third base coach's box. Talked with her before the game and mm -hmm. was asking her how they got through the, the rain delay yesterday. She admitted to me, she goes, you know, the, the team was loose and they were playing volleyball in front of the dugout and yeah. all of that stuff. And She wasn't cool too keen on that. Yeah, she wasn't really all about that. She said, you know, that's, that's a little uncomfortable for me. That's not how I wanted to handle it. But a couple of my assistants basically came over and said, look, this is, it's fine. Let them go. They're, they're loose. That's how they need to stay locked in. And, and, you know, props to her as a coach. Sometimes it's not about you. It's mm -hmm. about understanding the situation and putting your, your players in the best way they can succeed. Well, and everyone has a responsibility on the staff. Rodgers off the end of her bat that fell into center field. It's the softest single Rodgers has had maybe all yeah. season. <laughs> and uh, no question about it, it's a total team effort. And the gentleman standing right next to Coach Vaughn right now as they're discussing things is this one, little Texas leaguer falling in, is uh, Coach Vaughn's dad, Steve, who is a, a volunteer. And uh, she was telling us before the game, and I said, you know, who you kind of, kind of, leaned on through all this she said well obviously my husband but she said to us uh it's so nice to be able to have uh my dad with me on the bench to be able to discuss these things and and uh, just kind of take it in so the pinch runner here for Rogers State is Callie Yellen, who hit a big three-run homer earlier in the tournament. There's family ties on both sides here. Obviously yeah. really cool for Coach Vaughn to be working with her dad and then Absolutely. for Coach Mayer to be working with his son, Jared. Yeah, Jared is in the third base box and uh, was quite, you know, he was passionate with us earlier in the week when we spoke with him. Bridget Morales, high fly to right field. Davis makes the catch. Price tags to go second to third and the good, good throw. Comes back into second base to split the runners now with two outs. Mm -hmm. Get a look there at both <laughs> father and son. Yeah, perfect. that's a perfect spot right there. And uh, he said he's loved his, his son Jared played baseball and wanted to get into coaching and uh, thought this was a, a great opportunity. And so Jared has joined him on the staff and is over in the third base box uh, when the Toros come to bat. Tying run at third for Michaela Bowman, who re-enters here for Marissa Smith. Bowman takes a strike. Torched into the corner, base hit. The Hillcats have scored five in a row. Play at third base is dropped. It would have been close, but Callie Yellen is in there safely. Bowman into second base. 5-5 five, five game in the national championship. RSU's shit and shooting shoes have come on here. And a great job by Valencia to get over to that ball quickly and not allow more damage to be done. She got over to it, got it back into the infield, and absolutely Bowman out at second base, moving up there on the play. Watson fouls it out of play. They are calling it a single for Bowman and advancing on the throw. But it is an RBI for Michaela. She's three for three in this game. How about that? 5-5 five, five in the bottom of the fifth. Find it, find it. 
Watson, a little cue shot roller foul. She's got one speed. It's, I see the ball, <laughs> and I'm going to try to destroy it. <laughs> yeah, great bat speed, huh? no question about it. It is, as they like to say when Lana comes to the plate, with Watson, too. It's all gas, no breaks. Oh, two. Watson 0 for 2. Oof. Good change of pace. Great pitch from Lala Olagi. And she gets Watson to swing and miss at strike three. But the Hillcats add one in the fifth on the two out RBI single from Michaela Bowman. And we've got a 5-5 contest. Game one in a best of three national championship series is deadlocked as we head to the sixth. Love the energy around town here in Denver. People express themselves in a lot of ways in this city, and I love the passion of the people here in the Rocky Mountain air. We got a great softball game on hand here, too. We got, we, I'll tell you what, we got championship staff and crew on our production crew this weekend as well. Really enjoyed showing you the sights and sounds of Denver, Colorado. Under a called strike, nothing and one the count. Sturm, Davis, and Hull, it's seven, eight, nine in the order. That's not typically the part of the order that should scare you, but if you're the Hillcats, this has been the diff uh, most difficult part of the order to actually get out. First time though, they're facing Michaela Hillman. Sturm, a two run single last time up to make it three nothing. One for two, she also scored on Kaylee Hull's two run double. Strike three. One out in the sixth. Grooving right along, right? Keeping it low, keeping it right in the spot. And they are working to perfection right now. Alex Davis, couple fly outs to right field. Way outside as Hillman lost control of that one. You can pull one down the left field line or shoot it to almost straight away or just left of straight away center field. A lot of running room out there. Davis chops one towards short. Price. No, she made an error earlier, but Price has played really good defense, mm -hmm. not just today, but the whole tournament. Ball that just gets beaten down in this bouncy turf. A nice cherry pick right across to first base for the out. I just feel like Price has read the ball off the bat well all week. Yeah. She takes good angles to balls. She knows when to charge. She knows when to stay back. She's a smart player. And boy, is it valuable to have a good shortstop. By the way, Jaime has also been fantastic. Even though the Toros have had some fielding blunders. Kaylee Hull, solo homer in the third, two-run double last inning, or I should say last time up in the fourth. 
Hillman trying to go one, two, three. It's on the corner, one and two. Little work there too by Rogers, kind of slid it back in just a hair more. It's got to be all one fluid motion too. On the ground right side, Spain takes care of it with Watson there. One, two, three in the top of the sixth. And Roger State is feeling the momentum. They were down 5 nothing halfway through the fourth. Now it's 5-5 five, five and they're coming to bat in the sixth. What more could you want? It's a tight game. It's been well played on both sides. Some good clutch hitting. And we're tied at five in the bottom of the sixth. Winner of this game has a serious advantage going into tomorrow. Best two out of three national championship series. One game today. Game two and if necessary, game three here tomorrow. Who's going to come up? with the big play that'll help win the game. Just off the outside corner. Toros scored four unearned runs in the fourth inning. Sturm and Hull drove them home. Rogers State answered with four runs of their own in the bottom of the fourth on not one, but two two-run homers from Morales and Gibson, who leads off here. And Michaela Bowman with a two-out RBI single last inning. The Hillcats have left five on base, four in scoring position. Toros have stranded four, three in scoring position. Gibson, Presnell, and Spain, the scheduled Hillcat hitters in the bottom of the sixth. Gibson one for two, also popped out to second base. Ooh. What a catch. <laughs> Labanog snagged it just before it hit the turf. One out. Got to be ready. Got to protect the line now, right? We're late in the game. And off the line about eight feet, but played perfectly. Good reaction time. Here's Presnell, who is 0 for 2 today. But again, if you missed the note earlier, coming into this game, she was the hottest hitter in the tournament. Was hitting a cool 727. <laughs> 8 for 11, and then included in an out in her most recent at bat coming into the day. Floats this one out toward the second baseman, Al, who's got it with two hands. Presnell. Cooling off a little bit. And now there's two outs for Chelsea Spain. Spain, one single in three at bats. She's lined out and struck out two. Not quite. Ashley Weiss, the starting pitcher, three and a third. Four runs on six hits with a walk and two strikeouts. Olagi has been good since coming on. On the other side, Drea Morales gave up five runs, only one earned on five hits over three and two thirds innings. She struck out one and did not walk anybody. And Michaela Hillman has been very tough to hit. She has not given up a run since she came onto the game. 
Two balls and a strike. Fourth time through the order now for the Hillcats. This one's in the air to right field, carrying pretty well. It is off the yellow line and bounces back into play. Spain on her way to third with a sliding triple. Literally inches from a go-ahead home run. And it was crazy just how that ball kept carrying and carrying and carrying. It looked like it was routine when it first came off the bat. Hit it in the air to right field, I totally agree. I mean, that, that looked almost like a lazy fly. Now Price on the corner strike called. In softball here, if it hits the yellow line, that doesn't mean it's a homer. It comes back in, it's still in play. It's a, it's a ball's in play and playing right perfectly. It couldn't have actually played any more perfect coming back in for Davis so she could get that ball into the infield quickly. Price down in the count, nothing and two. If the Hillcats can score here and take the lead into the seventh, they'll be three outs away from taking game one of the series. Price floats one down the left side, long run in, but a foul ball. Valencia not playing very deep. Nope. And if there is anybody going to track that one down, Claudia has the wheels to do it. She's been doing that all week, hasn't yeah. she? She's got the burners. Price watches outside. It's now one and two. Yeah. I'll tell you, it. the one thing right now, if I'm Price and she's getting that pitch to the outside, she can scoot it through that 5-6 hole. She's uh, in good shape. And it's all direction with her bat and where she catches it in the zone. Timing of it. Uh, you can never practice a slap enough. You can see the spacing there. Easier said than done. She's trying. The great Mike Candrea, former Arizona coach, was one of the best at teaching the slap hit. Big pitch coming for the Toros. On the ground, left side, Price can run. Labanaw gets rid of it and gets the out. How about that defense from Cal State, Dominguez Hills? Sweaty palms time in this game. We are tied at five, heading to the seventh on NCAA.com. <laughs> Rogers State, Cal State, Dominguez Hills, 5-5 five, five, as we go to the seventh inning. Hillcats have only been playing softball since 2006. It's not like they've got a crazy rich tradition and history, but this is the team that this program is most proud of. They are fabulous competitors in the Mid-America Intercollegiate Athletics Association winning their first tournament title ever, although they were not regular season champs this year. Andrea Vaughn and her coaching staff named Central Region Coaching Staff of the Year. They were down 5 nothing and have come back to tie this game against a Toro's offense as Labanog goes through it, 0-2. A Toro's offense that has completely dismantled every pitching staff it has seen mm -hmm. here this week. 
Credit Michaela Hillman, who's looking over to her dugout right now for the sign ahead 0-2. She has been really awesome coming in in relief in a difficult situation and has retired five of the last six. You play seven innings, and to have a game where five runs on seven hits is below average for you in a tournament is really saying something. 1-2 is grounded towards second. Spain, one out. Labanog, unfortunately, <laughs> tough day at the plate. Four ground outs, 0 for 4. Now Kiana Abalera. She's 0 for 3. Struck out last time against Hillman. She's got good power to right and right center here. They've got to be respectful on that right side of the field. You know, she hasn't pitched till today, and so maybe we haven't appreciated it enough. Michaela Hillman right now has my attention as maybe the most impressive pitcher we've seen in the whole tournament. Agreed. I mean, she's got seriously good stuff. And the fact that she hasn't even gotten on the field because Morales is their star. We'll talk about depth. Yep. Hillman's the real deal. In their first strike, three and one. Gibson and Watson pinching in at the corners. Middle and field back here. Ball four. And so the Toros have exactly what they want. Raquel Jaime coming to the plate with a runner on base. And I think we're going to get a pinch runner for Abalera. It's now official. Janessa Hebreo on her way in. Bray has played a good bit this week yes, off she the has. bench. Wouldn't be surprised if she stays in defensively in the bottom of this inning. She's a very good center fielder, and she can really run. Jaime. Oh, boy. Check swing roller. And Hillman throws her out at first base. I hate to say it this way, but that might be Jaime's worst at bat of the tournament. She's been so good, and she just didn't seem committed to wanting to swing at that pitch. I don't know if they got caught up on the signs or, or what it was. She really didn't really want to go for that pitch, try to pull her bat back, actually. And... Uh, Unfortunately, the ball found her bat. It's a huge break for Roger State. Jaime's been the best offensive player here this whole week. As Hillman apparently misses the zone there to Claudia Valencia. But if you're a Toros fan, the danger is still lurking. You've got the go-ahead run at second base with two outs and your cleanup hitter Valencia at the dish. Turns and burns one foul. We have seen some seventh inning two out magic this week. We've even seen a come from behind, go ahead home run with two outs in the seventh inning. Molly Cobb did that earlier in the tournament. Good change of pace, but it's below the strike zone. It looked pretty good too. Valencia, you mentioned it earlier, she's got such confidence. She loves this situation, wants the chance to come up big. On the corner, two and two. Dominguez Hills has a chance. Maya Lopez, a great hitter waiting on deck. On the ground to Price. 
gathers and throws her out at first. Hillman dodges the bullet of the one out walk. Got through the meat of the order without giving up a run. And now Rogers State has a chance to end this game on their own terms. Bottom of the seventh tie game. That's what they're playing for this week here in Denver. We are tied at five going to the bottom of the seventh inning. This is just game one. Nobody's winning the trophy today. But a win today would put you one win away from glory. Janessa Hebreo stays in the game for Kiana Abalera. She's playing center field here in the bottom of the seventh. Alyssa Olagi working first to Lana Gass. Off the end of the bat to short, and Jaime throws her out on one pitch. Good start for the Toros defensively now, because the bases are empty for the very dangerous Abby Rogers. And Rogers is going to get pinch hit for. How about that? Well, it worked mm -hmm. out pretty well for this young lady last time she had a pinch hit. Absolutely. Hit a three-run home run, Callie Yellen. That's downstairs. I got to be honest, I am not surprised to see Yellen pinch hitting, but I am surprised to see her pinch hitting for Rodgers. Well, and, and it all started probably last inning uh, as well. Uh, you know, pick up a bat, start swinging, maybe go over to the other field. In the air to right center field, carrying well. Get out of here! Yellen wins it! Unbelievable! You think you have the moment once, and it's pretty darn good. You think you have the moment twice, and how about this for Callie Yellen? You get the call, you're just trying to make some good contact, and my gosh, what a stunning turn of events for the Hillcats, and no bigger stage. I can't even imagine what Callie Yellen is feeling, and the Toros right now gotta keep their heads up high. It was one pitch, right? One pitch, one difference, and the right call. Rogers State University is one win away from winning a national championship. As Yellen hugs everybody, we relive the moment. Her third at bat, her third at bat of this series. Two of those at bats, have been home runs. She cannot get around the bases quick enough to be back with her teammates. You want to celebrate the moment, might want to get into a trot, but not today because you have just taken game number one, one step closer and one game away now to a national championship. Oh, that's the coolest thing ever. Callie Yellen, what dreams are made of. A game-winning walk-off homer 
in the National Championship Series. Andrea Vaughn, the head coach, off camera, just uh, spoke with Abby Rogers, gave her a big hug. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine that was an easy thing to do, to tell your cleanup hitter who's got a couple of home runs right. this week, hey, we're going to pinch hit for you in this giant situation. But it worked out incredible. The feel that that coaching staff has right now, it's, it's pretty darn special. Jim Mayer and his staff trying to tell their team, look, that one hurts, but it's not over. And we've done this all year long with our back against the wall. We did it yesterday. Let's go win two games tomorrow. We can still win the national championship. I know that hurts for the Toros, but sheer ecstasy for the ladies from Oklahoma. Final line score, Cal State Dominguez Hills, five runs, seven hits, no errors. They stranded five. Rogers State, six runs, 10 hits, two errors, and they stranded six. The winning pitcher is Michaela Hillman, who was terrific in relief today. Hillman came on for Andrea Morales. She threw three and a third innings, did not allow a run, walked one, struck out two, and scattered just two hits. The losing pitcher, and it's tough luck, Alyssa Olagi. She gives up two runs over three innings on four hits with a walk and two strikeouts. Time of the game, one hour and 50 minutes. We saw several homers today. Kaylee Hull, a solo shot in the third. A pair of two-run homers in the four-run bottom of the fourth inning for Rogers State from Bridget Morales and Jalen Gibson. That brought it to 5-4 after the Toros scored four unearned runs thanks to two errors in the top of that fourth inning. The Toros were cruising, but Rogers State answered with four in the fourth. They got one in the fifth from Michaela Bowman with an RBI single, and in unbelievable fashion, a walk-off pinch hit homer for Callie Yellen in the bottom of the seventh, and Rogers State wins six to five. Cannot wait for tomorrow's national championship, game two, and if necessary, game three. We've got it all here for you on NCAA.com. For Leah Secondo and our entire production crew, have a wonderful Memorial Day holiday. Celebrate safely. I'm Brendan Gulick. We'll see you back here tomorrow at noon local time in Denver. You're watching the NCAA Division II Softball Championship on NCAA.com.